two, ready. In life, there are two types of sailors. There are those who have grounded their boat at least once, and those who... <laughs> oh, sh oh, well, that was touching. Oh, well. I guess that's the story I'm telling you about today. Good morning. Today, it is time for us to continue making our way south from Nova Scotia back to the east coast of the United States. Our plan was always to sail really fast to Nova Scotia and then make our way slowly back south. There's a lot of things that came in the way of that. One of them is we had a really good time here. Another one was that Ryan needs to work. He has a business trip to Seattle coming up. And so it was not our plan to do that. But today we're starting to sail to Boston. The plan is to sail from Lunenburg to a beach somewhere in southern Nova Scotia. From that beach, we're going to be sailing either to Shelburne or Clark's Harbor on the southwestern tip of Nova Scotia. And then from that point, we're going to stage for the big passage to Boston. Initially, we were going to go to Cape Cod and then the Elizabeth Islands, Martha's Vineyard, Block Island, maybe Newport. Uh, but Ryan needs to fly to Seattle. There's a direct flight from Boston to Seattle. So we're, we're going to Boston. Ryan has booked a flight in like six days. So that's how long we have to get there. Hi. Hi. Hi, Sony. This has become our new last minute thing before we leave. That's to move the Starlink. Since I don't have it permanently mounted. So we just kind of do this ish. And we're going to put it in the cockpit today because I, I need it later for a call. This year, Starlink has absolutely changed our lives in terms of our ability to rely on the internet to do our work. It's been great for us to uh, send my projects and my pre-cuts to our editors. It's been great to have the ability to take calls from like virtually anywhere. Okay. <laughs> and then you're plugging it back in? No, not yet. We'll just kind of put it here for now. Okay. Shall we go? Should you put a life jacket on, Barney? Let's put your life jacket on. Okay. Okay, Ryan, you're ready? I'm ready. Wanna go? Yeah. That's pretty easy. One. And two. And we're off. Oh, it's a little sad leaving Lunenburg. It's such a pretty place. We've had such good times here. Oh. Okay, Ryan, let's go to Boston! Boston! Yay! But not tonight. Not as exciting as Delaware, huh? <laughs> I'm in Delaware. You decide to leave? A little bit. But on to new things. That'd be nice. How about you, Barnacle? So Ludenberg is officially behind us. We're on the engine. The water is flat as it can possibly be. And I have a little work to do. So I think that I'm gonna take advantage of this situation uh, to send a few emails and get some work done. Yeah, hopefully it stays that way. There's definitely been times in the past when we left the harbor, the sea was really flat. I started working, waves started picking up and ended up with me feeding the fish. Hopefully not today. So we're coming into Carter's Beach. It's apparently called the Million Dollar Beach because you can find sand dollars on the beach. You can find what? Sand dollars. Sand dollars? Don't you know what a sand dollar is? No, what is that? They're these like white, like sea things 
that have like a little imprint on the top. And they call them sand dollars. I don't know if it's true though. Somebody just wrote, I only sell one comment to it. Looks nice, there's a little lighthouse here. Looks like it will be protected. Hey Barney. This is so pretty, it looks like a postcard. It's just like a painting. Good morning. Daddy Ryan. Oh, I love putting your little hoodie on. She's so patient too. Bada boom, bada bing. Good morning, everybody. This is our second day towards Boston. Uh, last night, everybody was uh, quite tired. Days at sea are so much more tiring than we often remember. Ryan is still a little tired this morning, but we're ready to go. Just fire her up. Wow, it was... Uh, nice and toasty in the cabin and it's actually a little chilly outside Whew. okay fam let's do this okay ryan ready yeah i'm ready Are at? It's hard to say. Do you want to get the binoculars? So there were two boats that were on anchor with us at Carter Beach yesterday and uh, we all left pretty much at the same time but this one catamaran took a weird turn and they seem to be looking at something we're not quite sure what. There's seals on those rocks there. Oh my god, you're right! Oh my god, there are seals, seals everywhere. I'm gonna go change the lens of my camera and we're gonna go check them out. Oh, that's so cool. Hi, buddy! Oh, was that you? The boom? Did we hit, did we touch? No. Yeah, I think we touched. No, it's, it's, no, I think it's fine. Oh, well, that was touching. It's okay. It's all right. Ah! Okay. All right. Okay. I'm stuck, honey. All right. I need you to take over now. All right. How's it looking, Ryan? It's fine, I think. 
Do you remember how fast you were going? No, we weren't going fast at all. It was a bit scary because at some point we were like stuck. Yeah. That was scary. But it was marked on the chart as a depth of at least five meters. Yes. And there must have just been a couple of rocks there. Yes. And you were che you were monitoring the depth and yeah, we had I was watching it the whole time. Plenty of depths. And it was five meter chart datum, so it's five meters low tide, super mega low tide. It's okay. It happens. There's people. Did who, you see the rig move? Uh, it was not moving as much as you think it did. It sounded more than it moved. I have it on camera. Good management of the situation, Ryan. Did you feel like we were going fast? No, no, absolutely not. That's why, you know, I felt something. That's why I asked you. Oh, was that you? The boom? Did we hit, did we touch? No. Did you put something on the No, because I looked at the thing the and it said three and a half meters. And then it went, it dropped real quick down to 1.8 and that's when I like, we need to get moved around. And yeah. it gave us some power to try to get us around. And right. That's when we must have hit. Barnacle was not happy. No. Oh, Barnacle. What did those guys say to you? They said that they heard from us. I'm going to call them on uh, channel 16. They, they heard of us from uh, friends. Perfect, perfect, perfect. This is Polyseal, Polyseal on 1.6, over. Polyseal, this is perfect. Uh, I want to go 1.7. Did you see us ground? I'm sorry, say again? <laughs> Did you see us eat the rock? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you guys all right? <laughs> yeah, we're good. Uh, there probably was uh, some unmarked rock and uh, yeah, we hit. It was uh, charted at five meters, but oh well, it happens. Oh man, yeah, we, um, we never hit anything in there, but uh, I also wasn't looking at the depths, I was looking at the seals. You also do not have a six foot keel. You guys get any good pictures of the seals? Yeah, I got some great footage and then the camera was rolling when we hit the rock, so, you know, <laughs> two for one. Well, I guess if you're gonna hit a rock, you might as well get something you can use on the channel, right? <laughs> oh, those moments are so embarrassing, but uh, sure. <laughs> To be honest, that's what's missing on most of the YouTube sailing channels is um, they portray it as uh, a fantasy, nothing nothing so much about the reality, so uh, reality is good. Alright, we'll, uh, we'll quote you on that on the channel. <laughs> All right, well, have a good passage today. We'll see you tonight in Shelburne. Oh, it was definitely not charted. I was a bit shocked when we hit, actually, but it was just, like, there must have been two rocks and our keel got between them, and that's why when I went forward, then when I went back. Yeah, I know, because, like, at some point, I was like, are we stuck? Yeah, we were, oh, there's another seal. Oh, hi. Life jacket on the yeah, oh, that's really bad. I was gonna say, in the seven years now, I think it's been seven years since we owned Polar Seal, we have touched the bottom uh, three times. The first time was on our first year, we were returning from uh, Gotland, which is an island in the middle of the Baltic. It was at the time that we really had not a lot of experience and a day at sea for us was really, really tiring. I had been seasick all day, so Ryan was at the helm, really exhausted. I was down in the cabin, I felt the boat go up, and I heard a boom, and I looked over to the truck platter, and sure as hell, there was a little cross indicating a rock. Not fun. We hold out the boat, the boat is fine, the boat was fine, it was okay. The second time was, I think it was three years ago, we were in Curacao, and we got pinched by a giant container ship against shore and so we touched the mud but it was more like skipping over the mud uh, the boat didn't stop like it was just like we felt the ground whoa what was that same thing we hold out the boat the boat looks fine this is out of the three times that we've touched the bottom this is the first time that we're touching something that was not marked and i tried looking down in the water and there was no visibility there was no way i could see um, what was going on uh, underneath us uh, which made it a little concerning because we had no idea what was there so uh, yeah but boat is fine we'll check the keel next time we haul out 
when we touched the ground this time, I knew that we were drifting and we were we had like no speed uh, under the hull. So um, I was really not too worried about what it did. Okay, you guys, there are two types of sailor on this planet. There are the ones who have touched the bottom once and the ones who lie about it, okay? Come at me in the comment section. <laughs> I think that Barnacle was traumatized by this incident. A little more than us, probably. Yes. The boat did rock. We, uh, we rocked the boat. I promise you, we won't do that again. We have the track on the chart plotter. We never went out into this shallower area. Okay, show me. So this is where we hit. It was kind of like in the middle of this five meter contour. So I just decided to open up the Navionics chart on my phone just to see what that looked like. And there, it's not charted on that Navionics for some reason, but there is on this. There's a rock here. And it's actually called Fucking rock. It's <laughs> <laughs> me again. Navionics user added that. Fucking rock. It definitely was not on that other chart. Hi, Sophie from the future here, jumping in very quickly because I thought I had recorded something and I did not. But looking back at the chart, we realized that we didn't ground on the f***ing rock. If you look here on Massacre Islands, which I'm not kidding, is where we grounded. So here is f***ing rock, but we were actually here when we grounded. So I did the Nova Scotia community a solid and I added another f***ing rock. So if in the future you find yourself sailing in Nova Scotia by the Martin Islands, which you really should because it's absolutely gorgeous and you are captivated by the seal sirens of Nova Scotia, um, you can check Navionics and uh, avoid, avoid the f***ing rocks. Yeah, you can thank me later. Just a little bit. And this, this wouldn't be Nova Scotia sailing without a little bit of fog, right? Well, it's time to turn on the radar. Okay, so it's now been a few weeks since we grounded the boat and you know, seven, eight years ago, this would have been a huge deal for us. We did freak out. So, Ryan, is grounding a big deal? It can be a big deal, but not all groundings are made equal. Uh, I will say I am not an expert with the structural integrity of hulls. So it's always a good idea if you have any doubt in your mind to talk with a surveyor uh, if you have any questions. but. So for instance, in some parts of the world where the bottoms are heavily mudded or a lot of mud down there, uh, an example would be the Chesapeake where we were this spring. It is very common for people to run aground in that mud. So if you're going quite slow, it might not be a problem and you might just kind of look into it and you gotta look your way out. Uh, but it really depends like what your speed is and are you under sail. Now in parts of the world like in Sweden or in Canada where there's a lot of rocks there, that obviously can be a lot more detrimental to the boat. We had a friend who was chartering their boat a few years ago and the charter clients ran into a rock going six, seven knots under motor and that did significant damage to the boat. In our case, we were probably doing a quarter of a knot if less than that. Uh, and it was just probably sounded worse than what it really was. Uh, so the first thing we did was take all the pressure off the keel. So that means if you're sailing, you should drop the sails or if you're motoring, just slow down, and figure out what's going on. 
Go down in the bilge, recheck the keel bolts, make sure there was no water ingress through those keel bolts or any cracking, new cracking along the keel bolts. Uh, and then I checked the rib structure of the boat um, to make sure there's no major separation between that and the hull. And how did it look? Looked good. One thing I like to do is dive under the boat and make sure there's no separation between the keel joint and the hull of the boat. How was that? Yeah, there's a little dig uh, right on the ball with the keel at the bottom, but okay. it's not very bad. Do you find not very bad? It's just the paint off. It's not digged or anything. Okay. Just a little bit of the paint. But there's no, the the keel where it hits the hull uh -huh. looks, the, the integrity there looks fine. Like it's not separated or anything. I don't think we were ever worried about that. Oh. And it's sometimes hard to check on water. So it's, it's better when it's on land because what you can do is put the weight of the boat on the keel. And if that comes on and a bunch of water squirts out, you know that there's an issue. Uh, but so far everything looks fine there as well. But again, I am not a skilled surveyor, so if you have any doubts when you're doing it, the best thing to do is relieve the pressure off the keel uh, and get it inspected. Okay, you guys, that was it. That was the story of us grounding polar seal in Nova Scotia on a fucking rock. And you know, it happens. It happens to everybody. If it has not happened to you, maybe one day it will. And in those moments, I think that it's better when we share our experiences because maybe knowing that it's not always a big deal and when to start worrying can help us get a better grasp of the situations that we put ourselves into. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates of fun travels and um, yeah, cruising stories around the world. I'll see you next week. Bye.